Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another one. I gotta tell you a little bit about this guy right here. This guy was in the shop. Uh, don't do this. So actually, back in April, I was changing out spark plugs and getting ready for Grenada before the whole COVID-19 thing hit and then I had to cancel that trip. But I kind of rushed through it because I was trying to get everything ready and uh, stripped the number two uh, thread on the cylinder. Take your time, <laughs> take your time. Huge thank you to Roberts Marine for uh, getting this done. Took one day, one day turnaround. I thought for sure this was gonna be in the shop for like a week. Um, took them one day, tapped that out, put a new insert in, and then uh, ground up the prop a little bit. I dinged up the prop. Also changed the impeller. Haven't changed that since I've owned the boat, which has been three years, so. Thank you to them one day turnaround so we can get back on the water filming these videos for those of you that are beginners in pan fishing crappie fishing specifically this technique that i'm going to show you today has caught thousands upon thousands of crappie and it continues to catch thousands of crappie every single year it's a very simple setup it is a slip bobber and a live minnow rig and uh, i've kind of started using this different type of bobber so i got a box of bobbers that they sent me but i started using these so which ones are they? There we go. These guys. These three-in-ones. I'm gonna explain why I started using these instead of what I have been using, which I know a lot of you guys saw these videos on these wobble bobbers. Focus camera. Ah, on these wobble bobbers. There you go. Yeah, this one's pretty beat up. But it's still good. I mean, they're still good bobbers, but the main complaint I always get about bobber fishing is when I tie on a slip bobber, my rod is completely dedicated to that slip bobber, um, especially from, from newer fishermen, newer anglers. So uh, this is gonna solve it. This one right here, it's gonna solve your issue. We're gonna tie that on a couple rods, put some live minnows on. Also, I got some new Aberdeen hooks that I, I think are be, gonna be pretty cool. You should probably check them out, but enough talking, let's get to the lake put some crappie in the boat. All right, we're on the lake right now. A little bit noisy because we're right next to the road, but uh, this is the entire setup. So the first thing you're gonna put on is one of these. It's a rubber bobber stop. I sell these for like, I think for like a buck. Real inexpensive. So the first thing you're gonna do is slide one of those on the line. I'm using six pound mono right now. 500 size reel. You can tie your own slip, but these are pretty pretty handy. See, it's got a little metal loop here. And all you're gonna do is you're gonna put your line through that little metal loop. Just like this. Just through one of them. Helps if your contacts are not spinning on you. So you gotta pull through like that. Then you're gonna grab one of the beads, little rubber bobber stops, and you're gonna slide it down onto the line while holding this other part, and slide it all the way past the tag end. See how the little tag end's sticking out? You gotta slide it over the top of that, and then you can pull the line out from that little loop. Now you got your rubber bobber stop on the line. Now these are the hooks that I'm using. These are the uh, zone lock hooks, and I'm gonna show you exactly why I'm using them. Cool thing about these zone lock hooks so you know, there's a little bit of a bend before the barb there. So the reason, so the cool thing about these zone lock hooks, there's a little bit of a bend before the barb. And the reason that's important is when these, when you hook into a fish and that fish actually slides up, that mouth gets torn up by that barb normally, but this prevents that from happening. So one, it's a little bit more ethical. Okay, it doesn't tear up that fish's mouth. With crappie especially, pot crappie are known as paper mouths, so it's super easy to uh, to tear a hole in their mouth and potentially lose the fish, which is actually the second reason why this is kind of important. The less chance you, or the, the less you tear up that fish's mouth, the less chance you have of that fish getting off. So that's kind of why that's important. Plus I'm using live minnows today, and it's actually gonna keep that minnow kind of on the bottom of this hook shank. So to tie this on, normally I like to tie, for live minnows, I like to tie a snell knot. And I'm gonna show you why I like to tie that after I tie it on. So the first thing is, you're gonna take your tag in and you're gonna put it through the opposite side of the point. So if the hook's like this, you're gonna take your tag in and put it through so it goes this way, okay? Away from the point of the hook, so like that. Then you're gonna pull out probably, I don't know, four or five inches of line, and you're gonna pinch that line against the bottom of the hook. 
like this, okay? And then you're gonna have, you got your tag end up here. You got your main line going through the eyelet of the hook. You're gonna take your tag end, but you're gonna leave a, a loop with your left hand, my left hand here, pinched against the hook and the line. So it's gonna create kind of a loop here in a second. I'm gonna wrap it around the shank. I'm actually gonna wrap it around the shaft of the hook four, five, six times, whatever you feel like wrapping. So just like that. Then you're gonna take the tag end and you see this loop that we created on this side? You're gonna take the tag end and actually put it back through that loop. Then you're gonna grab the tag end. Sorry, I probably got my fingers in the way of the camera here. You can take the tag end, put it back through that loop. Okay, we got it through our loop like that. Now, we wrapped it a bunch on the sh shaft of the hook here, so we don't want any of those wraps going above the eyelet of the hook. So we're gonna slowly pull down on the tag end, and then we're gonna slowly pull down on the main line going back to our rod tip. And you'll see they kind of cinch up on the shaft of that hook, and you can kind of slowly slide them up to just underneath the eyelet of the hook. And they should all slide up right underneath there. Then you pull the tag end and the uh, main line tight. Not too tight, I probably could have wrapped it a few more times there. But the reason this is important, if you noticed, the main line is going over the top of that, that eyelet of the hook. Okay, and when you set the hook, so if a fish bites it, you set the hook, it applies pressure upwards, okay? Because you're casting out and you're probably gonna, when you set the hook, the line's gonna go over the top of that eyelet, apply pressure upwards, and it's gonna give you a better hookup ratio. You're gonna clip the tag end of this line off, like that, and there you go. There's your snow knot tied on. This next part is a little bit controversial, I guess. Most people, when they use a split shot weight, like this one, uh, they put it about six to eight inches above the line. I'm going to put it directly above the eyelet of the hook. And I was actually fishing on Ren Lake, this is almost a year ago now, springtime crappie fishing with Andy, the owner of ACC Crappie Sticks. And uh, this is how we had it set up. We were fishing buck brush in about two to three feet of water. And the reason this is kind of important in the way this is set up, crappie are notorious for a negative bite. So what'll happen a lot of times is when they, when they go to grab the minnow, they'll raise up in the water column with it. They'll keep rising. And when that happens, your bobber will actually go sideways. It's called a negative bite. If you have your split shot, let's say this split shot, let's say six inches above the hook, like that, What'll happen is when they grab it, all of a sudden there's just a ton of slack line and this split shot is keeping that bobber straight up and down. So you're not noticing that there's a bite. That's why I'm gonna put it right above the eyelet of the hook. So the next step is this bobber, super simple bobber, three in one. Now you notice I could have set it up like a regular slip bobber all the way through, or put the line all the way through the middle of the bobber. Um, but the biggest complaint with people new to fishing and new to bobber fishing is what if I want to take the bobber off and just start casting? Maybe you got a, instead of an Aberdeen hook and a split shot, you got a jig tied on and you just want to put a plastic on and start casting. The reason this bobber is cool is you know it's got two different slots in the spring here. The top slot closest to the spring right now is for a fixed bobber setup. That bottom one is meant for a slip bobber setup and it's removable. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put that line right through that bottom notch, right there. It's gonna slide it in the bottom notch and I'm gonna let the spring shut. And it's gonna allow it to slide up and down the line just like that. So that is our setup. That's how you tie it on, super simple. And if for whatever reason, if you wanna to go to a jig instead of the, the uh, Aberdeen hook and a split shot, you can do that. And that way you can take the bobber off and start casting your jig out. I know that was kind of like a, a big thing for a lot of people brand new to bobber fishing is what happens if I set up a slip bobber and then it's fully designated slip bobber fishing. Well, this you can mix back and forth for casting or bobber fishing. So, all right, now that we got it tied up, let's uh, put some minnows on and catch some fish. There he is. Crop number one. Well, as you can see, we've switched lakes, different day. I uh, ran out of time on the other lake, had to run back and do some do some house stuff. There's a nice little, uh, about a nine, nine and a half inch fish. Solid eater for northern Wisconsin. Pooped all over me though. But I am set up on a very deep brush pile. Well, I think when I first started filming this, probably 
three or four days ago, the water temps were still in kind of the mid to upper 60s. Um, right now they're they're touching on 70. So these fish actually moved out pretty deep. I'm in about 22 feet of water right now, which is actually soup. Well, we're coming towards the end of June, so it's not really that deep, but. Uh, Depending on the lake and depending on the water temp, you could find fish as shallow as 12 feet and obviously as deep as 22, 23 feet. So we're gonna try to catch a couple of these fish. That slip bobber is so great. If you needed to cast out a long way, um, fishing some of these br brush piles right now, if you needed to cast out a long way, being able to reel up to almost like a foot below that hook, it's really easy to cast. Got him. There we go. Grappy number two. I'm gonna show you how I'm hooking my minnow up. These are all probably gonna be, that's a little smaller guy, that's about an eight inch fish. They're not gonna be big on this lake, but it's still a ton of fun to catch them. If you notice, I actually had to slide my slip bobber up a little bit. This is a dead minnow. Let's get a fresh one here. I had to slide my slip bobber up a little bit, or the slip uh, stopper. I wasn't quite deep enough. And for the most part, these rubber bobber stops, I haven't had a ton of trouble. I haven't had a ton of trouble of them getting stuck in the eyelets, as long as you have the bigger eyelets on these rods. Um, something like this right here. If you got the bigger eyelets, you should be okay. When you run into those, those micro-sized eyelets on the rods, that's when you can uh, run into trouble, that slip stop kind of sliding all over the place. But for the most part, it doesn't slide up. And the hook in this minnow, there's a few different ways you can do it. Most people, they hook them right below the, the jaw. Don't go in the head, or don't go through the brain, just kind of go short between the eyes. Because that if you go too far back in the, in the head, it'll actually kill them right away. Um, some people actually hook them through the back as well, but for right now, because these crappie actually like to eat the head first, uh, they'll, these, these crappie seem to be pretty aggressive actually. Pretty much as soon as I drop it down, I get hit. Let's flick it back over this brush pile. But yeah, they are deep. There's one. Oh boy. Ooh. If that's a crappie, that's a good crappie. Yeah, it is a good crappie. Oh. It's about a 10 inch eater. And that one shut off. Throw him in the box. There we go. There's another solid 10 inch eater right there. And you notice they're not creating a huge hole in the crappie's mouth because that hook, that little, that little bend in that hook, see how it stops that, that barb from getting up there? It stops that barb from hitting that crappie's mouth. Tearing a hole in its mouth and letting that fish get off. There's one. There we go. Yep, there's another solid eater. Yeah, these crappie are taking that bobber right under. It's another solid 10 incher. Not gonna catch any monsters today. And we got some boats piling up on the spot, so we're gonna move. <laughs> That right there, oh, if I can get it evened up. That right there is a loaded crappie crib right there. You got some waves bouncing, but there it is. Oh, fish just hit it on the drop. I was gonna see if I was too deep. That crappie came up and just smacked it. I wasn't even, I don't even think I was like six feet down. I got was super aggressive. It's 
super aggressive fish. Seems like these uh, these crappie, if you can see here, oh, let me make sure I don't hit my marker buoy. But there is the school. There's the school right there. There's a ton of them. They're not very big. They're probably nine and 10 inch fish, but in 20 feet of water. See that, that water temp almost 70, 70.5. We warmed up quick in the last couple weeks here. Uh, summertime fishing, this is what it's going to be like. These fish are going to push out depending on the water temps. If the water temps cool down, they're going to push back into that 15 foot or less depth. But with these temps in the 70 degrees, they're going to keep out to that 15 to 20 foot mark. Some of them might push out a little bit deeper. I think 20, 22, 23 is probably going to be the deepest I see these fish most of the summer until the fall when that water temp really starts to plummet. That's when they push back out into, into that edge of that wintering basin. I think I gotta go to the other side of the lake. Holy smokes, this wind just picked up out of nowhere. My trolling motor can't keep up. I got it on max right now. Yeah, we, uh, we can't fish here. Hit it on the drop. Hit it on the drop. Had to move spots. That uh, south end of the lake was getting real nasty. It's another another nine inch fish. Yeah, that south end of the lake was real nasty with the waves. And I actually moved because there was about four or five boats stacked up kind of on this section of, of this brush right there. They're not big fish, but that is a crappie crib. See if there's more. Yeah, there's a ton of them stacked up on there. And there's a deeper weed edge. These uh, northern lakes, see that, that weed edge is in 15, 16 feet of water. That's where it stops. It's thick, real thick, and then it starts uh, kind of getting sparingly. It starts getting kind of thin. And then these brush piles are set up on that deeper edge of the weed, weed pile for these summertime crappie. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. That is the simplest setup that will catch thousands of crappie every single year across the US and Canada. Super simple setup, basic Aberdeen hook. Well, this one's anything but basic. Uh, this is that zone lock hook. It's got that bend just before the barb to prevent uh, those fish from sliding up, hitting that barb and tearing a hole in their mouth. I know this is a little controversial setup, but uh, that split shot, I really like to kit it right down to the hook because especially if you're fishing in deeper water like I was today we were fishing in 20 feet um, earlier you probably saw me fishing in probably 12 to 15 feet but when you're fishing in deeper water and this can happen in shallower water too but those fish will come up grab that minnow keep rising in the water column and if you got that weight set up like this if it's set up a little bit higher they grab that hook and they keep rising in the water column your bobbers are gonna be stuck like this but if you have that weight set all the way down when they grab that weight and raise it up in the water column, that bobber is going to go from straight up and down to sideways. That negative bite. So key. Rod and Bob slip bobbers. Got that awesome little... There's two notches there for you. It's two notches. This one down here that I was using, that is the slip bobber notch. The one up closer to the main part of the bobber here, that, that is for a fixed bobber setup if you're fishing in shallow water. Or you're, I, I would say probably anything less than about six feet, you could probably use that depending on how long your rod is. And then also, it's got the uh, hole in the middle of the, of the bobber here. That bobber's hollowed out, so you can use it like a regular slip bobber if you want to. I'm personally going to be using it, this, uh, this top little notch here. 
just so if sometimes if I'm fishing with just a straight jig, you can take it right off, just go to vertical jig fishing. I know a lot of people had questions about that. If, if they tie on a bobber, it's just designated to bobber fishing. Now it's not. Go ahead, check these out. I'll link these below. Uh, but that's the entire setup. Very, very simple setup. Catches thousands of crappie. We didn't catch any big ones today, but there were a ton of small ones on some brush piles. If you don't have brush piles in your lake, this question actually came up on Instagram not too long ago. If you don't have brush piles in your lake, in the northern states, we have giant weed beds that grow up in really deep water. I actually showed uh, some of them on a live scope here. The weed bed came out to about 15 feet, and then the brush piles, these are cribs, but they were dropped onto that 15 to 20 foot mark. So just after the deepest weed pile or weed edge. If you don't have brush piles or cribs like are in this lake, uh, the crappie will stack up on the deeper edge of these weed beds. So look for them in probably 12 to 20 feet of water depending on how clear the lake is. Now if you're fortunate enough to live on a body of water that is open water year round, uh, basically Missouri and southern Illinois, anywhere south of that, um, oftentimes you'll have large dock systems that are in the water year round. Um, those crappie will actually suspend around them or up underneath them. Um, you can still use this setup uh, for any brush piles that people put out around their dock system. Still a great setup. If you're trying to get up underneath that dock, you might want to take the bobber off and just kind of pitch the minnow in there or pitch a jig up in there. But uh, great summertime tactic. It will catch thousands of fish for tons of anglers across the U.S. this year. Go ahead, try it out. My rod and reel and the entire tackle setup will be in the description below. Appreciate you watching. If you got any comments or questions, you can post them in the comment section or you can message me on either Facebook or Instagram. I always appreciate hearing from you. Do me a favor, if you're brand new to this channel, click that subscribe button, click that bell. And if you found this video helpful, click that share button. I really appreciate it. We'll see ya.